The idea for this project came from the shape of this food container. It was so beat up that I had to replace it. But why would I just throw something in the trash if it can be turned into a robot, right? From this point on, my mission was to add some structure to the super thin walls it had. So I grabbed some interesting shapes I had in my collection and started gluing them to it. Hot glue was a great ally in this process as this type of plastic can be very immune to CA glue. 3D printing is now a big part of my process, so I took some measurements of the container and made some custom detail pieces to go all around it. Not only to make it look cool and get rid of the container look, but also to give it some structure from the outside. But this thing needs legs, right? Uh, so let's start making a waist first. Uh, this piece has an interesting shape with this entrance right here in the front, so let's put it to use. I combined it with lots of other gribblies and custom 3D printer pieces until it looked like this. And it connects to the main body shape from under. I have a huge collection of shapes like these ones right here, and I use those to quickly make some axles in my models. I include on the design file some extra cuts that makes it easier for me to just break the piece in the size I need. I made some changes on it using this tool, which is my mini disc sander. I made this tool myself, and if you want to see how I did that, there's a video here on the channel. This right here is a ball joint system uh, that I developed for another project, right here in the channel and I thought of using it right here in this project, one for each leg. Uh, that turned out to be a mistake, but I'll talk about why later. Now, let's focus on the legs. And there are four of them in this project. The more legs you have on a robot, the cooler it looks and the harder you'll have to work. I decided to make the lower leg segment first, using some styrene, some greeries and some acrylic shapes that were laser cut. To make the axle of this lower leg segment, I used some 3D printing and this right here is the final shape. All the other segments of the legs, and each leg has three by the way, were also built using a combo of some cool looking gribbles, some custom made 3D printed pieces and some acrylic shapes that were all cut, transformed and glued together and I gotta say I loved the overall look. And speaking of glue, I use mostly but not only CA glue for all plastics and this uh, weld bone type of glue which melts the plastic pieces together. But let me talk about the big mistake I made on the waist. As you can see, it is too small for the geometry of the legs. They are interfering with each other. So I had to remove the ball joint system from the back legs and this is something very simple to do if you're working with acrylic and CA glue. I made a couple of extra pieces like this one right here using mostly acrylic and some 3D printed leftover pieces and this will sit right here on the back providing not only an extra pivot point uh, but also some distance in between each knee so yeah, problem solved. As you can see, there's a bit of an extra space in between the legs. Next, I made 4 feet for the robot using this grip right here that has a very interesting shape. I added an axle to each one and now the legs are finally done. And it was when I did this knolling that I realized that this project was going to be much bigger than my original idea. I wanted to create a couple of rails uh, to go around the main body shape in which I would hang some cargo layer. So I made these uh, Lego hand looking pieces, glued it all around and I bent a 3mm metal rod to go on the top of it. This right here is a very good looking gribbly I found that I glued to the back of the robot so it could hold its battery pack. Which in this case right here is a sphere cause well, why not? But this is a carrier drone, so I needed some cargo. And I mean, I made a ton of cargo for this one. I began by making a fuel tank using this coin saver that I bought for cheap a long time ago. In order to keep it symmetric, I actually bought two of them and I used uh, CA glue to glue both halves together. 
Now to make this fuel tank believable, I needed to create some structures to go on the outside edge. So again, I measured it and I made some cool looking rings to be glued using some CA glue around it. I also did some pieces to go on the front and on the back of the fuel tank. And of course, at the end of the process, I added a cool looking gribbly to the front. I then connected the rings using a thin metal rod and now the fuel tank looks amazing. The next boxes I made using these black gribbles right here, adding some air veins that were chopped from some dead laptops. A 3D printed piece goes in the middle and it connects the black gribbles together. And I also developed a modular system so I could connect the boxes together using some 3mm steel rod. I get these uh, 3mm steel rods when I take some DVD readers apart and don't tell anyone but I have a ton of these. I made some extra luggage like this pink cookie right here uh, using that same idea of connecting the gribbies together using a 3D printed part. This one goes right here in the middle in between the two uh, big boxes kind of hanging from the side. The same way this next one will also be. Again, this is how I work these days uh, using my 3D printer uh, to quickly put the gribbies together always measuring what I have in hand and going back and forth in the process. I then made some extra boxes that you can see hanging on the metal rails and this is when I decided to stop adding cargo to it. I know, I know I got kind of crazy with this one uh, but I love how, how tall uh, this project got. Okay, so now the entire project is gonna go through a final detail pass. In this process, I'll grab my collection of tiny little griblies that I've been saving all these years and I'll glue them to the surface of the model. This is usually very time consuming, but this is one of the most important steps of the build. The tiny details help to better tell the scale of the robot and that alongside the human figure and the weathering, I'd say are deal -breaking and can make the model to really stand out, in my opinion, of course. Not gonna lie, uh, this process alone consumed a couple of days in the project, but the results are amazing, it really makes a difference. Now, finally, every piece can receive the final coat of primer, and let me tell you, uh, there are a ton of separate pieces. When I began this project, I thought I would do something simple, but as always, it turns out much bigger than my original idea. Now, let's put this bad boy together, pose it funny, and take some cool pictures of it before I start painting it. I decided to work on the human figure before I painted the robot. I received this figure from a friend and as it looks like it fit perfectly on the scale I do for my robots, I decided to change it a bit and use it on this project. Nothing too fancy right here, I removed some features with my Dremel tool from the cloth of the original figure and using some epoxy putty and some other gribbies, I made some changes I felt were necessary. After all that, I also decided to, to give it a backpack, so I grabbed a cool looking tube gribbly I had in my collection and I made him a backpack. And once that was done, I gave the whole thing a coat of primer and painted this one. Uh, this one I hand painted with a brush, as I feel uh, I don't have the skills uh, necessary to paint something that small using my airbrush. 
Speaking of airbrush, let's talk about the painting process. And due to the amount of pieces this one has, it was a very long and hard process. In this project, I did a technique I call the fake chipping, which is simply adding some specks of black and rust colored primer, painting the pieces as you normally would, and scratching the surface using some sharp tools. In this process, some alcohol also helps. In this project, I also did something that I really like to do, which is making some 3D printed stencils. To make it, I simply measure the surface of the model where I need these stencils to be, and then I go to my computer and I model uh, some simple stencils that are 3D printed. They are attached to the surface using some double-sided tape, and when I paint it, I use a lots of airflow and very little paint flow. The result is very, very precise. And of course, I also scratch the surface of the stencil with a sharp tool. In this build, I decided to go a bit chaotic in terms of the paint scheme, and so each leg has a particular color and a particular wear. I want to convey the idea that this robot is heavily used and is constantly replacing some parts. As I said before, the weathering process is crucial to make the model really stand out, so I took a lot of time to get it right. In this project, I did an acrylic wash, which is different from what I usually do, but it worked the same in the end and so I'll probably do it like that from now on. It all received a coat of matte varnish and the model was done and the only thing left to do was the base of the diorama. For this project, I decided to make a nature scene, which is a first to me, and so I was a little anxious to start. The only cheap grass alternative I found around here is this one. It seems that these are just some tiny little wood chips that were tinted. I prepared the base using wood, car body filler, and some epoxy putty, and I decided to go with these materials for a couple of reasons. One, because I have no access to XPS foam for cheap, but two, because I feel like the bundle and the body will be much more durable. I glued the wood chips to the base using some CA glue, which really bothered my nose that day, and I painted the base and the grass using acrylic paint. And after a while, the project was done. To be 100% honest, when I started this project, the idea was to make something simple, that I would be done in a couple of episodes. And here I am, six months later, still finding spots where I feel I could have done better. But this is always how that goes, right? And this is only possible because of the support I get from my patrons. If you feel like you want to support me so I can keep making projects like this, sharing the entire process with you, check the links on the description. Box. You can also subscribe and share this video, that also really helps. And as always, thanks for watching.